This is Witchbase News for Friday the 15th of November 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Frontier have been seeking some more focused feedback, we've got an update on PitCon and the Burr Pits socials, David Braben tweets about the future of Elite and more. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ping the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support our channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. A forum thread emerged this week from senior community manager Paul Crowther looking to garner some focused feedback on ship and module transfer times in the game. Before you go off running to add your 10 cents I should point out that the thread which emerged on Tuesday this week hit 22 pages of feedback and was promptly closed this morning before this video was made so unless you caught the thread yourself I'm afraid the chance to contribute your thoughts on the subject has come and gone already. A cursory look through the thread would seem to indicate that most but not all of the feedback FDev got was that the transfer times are fine as they are and should be left that way. What is perhaps most interesting about the threads appearance is that it seems, from an outside observers perspective at least, to be part of a larger initiative within the company to ensure that Elite Dangerous is as accessible to as many people as possible and that any existing gameplay mechanics offer as little resistance as possible to players when it comes to finding their fun. Elite Dangerous has always been a somewhat tricky beast to navigate for players and developers alike. It's beholden to a near legendary legacy of a game from another era. The barriers that game, the original Elite presented such as brutally difficult docking manoeuvres, no fixed discernible goal or quest, long travel times in empty space with not much happening etc were actually part of its charm and come as part and parcel of how the game built its own legend in a time when games like that just didn't exist and games in general were a much more niche pastime than they are today. In the modern landscape Elite Dangerous of course doesn't exist in that same vacuum and it must walk a difficult line between still being true to its roots whilst not completely selling the farm it was raised on and just turning into Star Wars. The arrival of Super Crew's overcharge technology feels definitely part of that initiative. It comfortably cuts through one of the more hardcore but necessary elements in the game that being the true distances involved in space travel but it also makes that cut itself fun whilst simultaneously getting you to the fun you were aiming at in the first place much quicker. Likewise arcs driven pre-builds of existing ships are not game winning leapfrogs over the input required to make a ship better and more valuable but they do give a useful leg up and insight into what could be possible beyond that first difficult step in the game. And lastly the new ship designs now entering the game they encompass all the new features we've seen introduced this year but also are a definite step up in aesthetic design that is far less beholden to the legacy ship designs from the original game. Frontier were keen to point out in the thread that there is no suggestion that module or ship transfer times are being changed. It's interesting to see however that they were clearly keen to establish if the feature was being seen by the modern player base 10 years in as a point of resistance however. Just a very quick update on some more general burr pit stuff before we move on this week. We're very pleased to be able to announce that tickets to next years PitCon event in April in Nottingham in the UK have been selling very well to the point that there are now just around 20 tickets left. It promises to be a fun packed day full of spaceships, laughter and fellow commanders with panels, guests, live music, prizes and more. If you're thinking of going then you'll find a link to the PitCon website in the description below this video. 
And whilst I have your attention, in case you missed it, Rini and I made the decision to pull away from the Twitter or X social media platform this week and join the growing active community of commanders on Blue Sky who are now enjoying that platform instead. If you'd like to follow us there you'll find links to both our Blue Sky profiles also linked below. For the last few years there had been a general anxiety in the Elite Dangerous community about the future of the game and indeed if it even had one. Amongst the major contributing factors to this anxiety were a historical lack of communication from Frontier, the problems surrounding the launch of Odyssey and the subsequent cancellation of any future console development for the game. These problems were further compounded when the Frontier Foundry indie game publishing arm of the company was closed due to financial underperformance and then FDev's own first party developed titles themselves significantly missed their financial marks. Most notably in all of this was Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin. There's no comfortable way to adequately express quite how badly that game performed. All of these problems stacked up to the point where Frontier found themselves on wobbly ground and were forced to initiate some significant staff redundancies, shedding 20% of their workforce at the start of this year. It's fair to say it's been a tough period for the company, probably the most challenging time they've ever faced. Having weathered the storm however, Frontier have dusted themselves off and indulged in no small amount of self reflection. After their financial woes they announced that they would be pivoting the companies efforts back to more familiar turf, focusing on what has proven to be their traditional core strength genre and where they have seen the most profitability, that of creative management simulations. Titles like The Planet Coaster, Jurassic World and most notably Planet Zoo which is the Cambridge developers best performing title. Having announced that they were doubling down on CMS titles you could be forgiven for thinking that would leave our beloved genre defining space trader high and dry but if 2024 has taught us anything it's that that seems to be very much not the case. The graph you can see on screen now is from Frontiers annual shareholder presentation which covers off FDev's financial back and forths up until the end of July. The start of the various tracks shows initial development costs which includes paying for any licenses for things like Formula 1 and Jurassic World. Then upon release you have an initial upsurge of revenue generation for most titles at least and then generally each respective line moves steadily upward as more revenue comes in. Each line contains the occasional small uptick in revenue generation that can likely be attributed to things like sales on Steam and then there are large surges in revenue generation for the release of any paid DLC, console versions of various games or expansions etc. Right at the very very end of the line that represents Elite Dangerous there is a small but noticeable uptick in the revenue being generated by the game. It's hard to discern on the scales used in the diagram you are after all seeing a nearly 10 year lifespan at this point but it is there. That uptick represents the initial sales of the Python Mark II early access that started in early May. At the point the report was closed off the Python Mark II had been on sale for early access for just over a month and a half. But since then we've seen the Type 8 launch into early access, the engineering improvements, the Mandalay in early access, the launch of PowerPlay 2.0 and the announcement of the forthcoming colonization feature and the Cobra Mark V. The really interesting graph to see will be the same one in the next annual report that covers this period in the games life and in particular the launch of the Mandalay. It's worth underlining again that this chart shows revenue after all costs have been taken into account. This is effectively cash in the bank for Frontier for each title which is what makes this graph so interesting each year. Despite their entirely sensible refocus into CMS games it's very apparent to anyone playing the game right now that Frontier are very much still heavily invested in Elite Dangerous. 
The game always features on the official Frontier monthly livestreams and has delivered a constant stream of coming soon announcements throughout this entire year which along with those newly announced and released features and ships has seen more players returning to the game and the servers getting busier again. Having trawled through the annual report looking for any mention of Elite Dangerous the game is mentioned twice and on both occasions it's reiterated that Frontier is continuing to develop, expand and support the game going forward. Just this week in response to a tweet from Commander Exorcist about Elite Dangerous David Braben replied that quote, ...the team are working hard to support and improve the game and have had some great results with much more to come. End quote. You can obviously draw your own conclusions from that statement but suffice to say here we think it's all looking very encouraging for the future which is in strong contrast to player sentiment this time last year. The next Frontier Unlocked livestream is in 2 weeks time on the 27th of November and it's expected then that we'll hear more about the Cobra Mark V and the upcoming Galactic Colonization feature. Next month on the 16th of December Elite Dangerous itself will be celebrating its 10th anniversary. Have you been spreading your social media wings onto other platforms? Would you like to see ship and module transfer times changed? What other changes do you think could help make the game more accessible? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.